self-awareness and self-management skills are key. Now, I know that oftentimes when we think about helping kids navigate their social world, girls navigate their social world, we're thinking about helping them develop social awareness and relationship skills. But the self-awareness self and self-management is equally as important. Think about the emotional distress and upheaval related to a lot of the social cruelty and conflicts that go on for girls. So many teachers tell me that they lose so much classroom time after lunch and after recess because of what upsetting things have happened on the yard and that the kids come back in and they're so distressed that they can't focus. They can't settle themselves. Um, so, this, so their ability to be aware of their feelings and manage those feelings really key. And, and certainly parents see this all the time in terms of being, their children being uh, upset and sometimes unsoothable about distress that's going on in their friendship world. Um, and then there are the social awareness and relationship skills. And then finally, the responsible decision making about relation, around relationships. Like, hmm, I wonder if I should post this rumor on Facebook today or not. Um, you know, so, so being able to um, bring all of these things together. Say, should I post this on Facebook? Well, if I'm self-aware, I may be saying to myself, well, I'm really angry at her. I'm really pissed off. Um, I'm aware of that. And I'm not really wanting to use my self-management skills right now to just kind of sit with that. And I'm not really wanting to use my social awareness skills that would make me think um, maybe I could have a little empathy before I post this really ugly rumor about her. And my relationship skills, I don't really want to use my assertiveness <laughs> skills right now to go work this conflict out. So I'm going to make a really irresponsible decision and just post this, right? OK, so we can see how it can go sideways, how it can go sideways really fast. But you can see how all the skills are important. They're all important to what goes on socially. Now, another way to play that out is, oh man, I really have the urge to post this. This would just be the best rumor, and it would just really mess things up for her, and that would be great. Um, but I know I'm doing it out of anger. I know that maybe, maybe if I took some time to chill a little bit, take a walk, take a run, take a hot shower, <laughs> Do some art, do some writing, talk to somebody. Um, maybe I could settle myself so I could make a good decision. OK, I've done that. I've settled myself down. Um, now, wow, you know, I do care about her. She was my best friend last week. Um, maybe we can talk it out. Maybe I can let her know how I feel and what I would like to have be different. And maybe she can let me know how she feels and what she would like to have different. And maybe we could come up with a solution that we could both live with. And I won't post the rumor on Facebook. Yeah. You know, it's really what I, I have in an adolescent daughter. Yes. What's really challenging is the impulsivity that comes along with yeah. adolescence. Yes. So I'm looking yes. at this list. Yes. And that's got to happen really quickly. Because, you know, to be able to go down that list in your brain, uh, because the impulsivity becomes an obstacle right. to that. Well, one of the obstacles, and I'm so glad you brought this up, um, one of the obstacles is brain development. That frontal lobe just isn't quite where it's going to be at age 25 or age 30, right? So, you know, we really are, they are, it's challenging. It's really challenging. So working with these skills and working with them from an early, early age doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be really effective at it when they're in high school. But maybe 
they'll say, I'm really angry, that's why I'm going to do it, and then they're going to do it. <coughs> but the more we can work with them developing these core competencies, it's going to take time, it's going to take brain development, it's going to take a lot of skill building, a lot of life experience. There's going to be tears, there's learning the hard way. I mean, and that is part of what this is all about. Um, this is a developmental. This is a developmental process. We're. I think it's really actually dangerous to think that we are going to uh, do away with social and relational aggression among girls or boys. Um, because part of what they're doing is a developmental task of figuring out how to navigate social power, how to belong, how to navigate their social worlds. And they're going to experiment. And they're sometimes going to do mean things. And sometimes when they do those mean things, they're going to have an experience of regretting that or maybe getting social benefits from that and it's there's a lot of learning that's involved that that we can't rob them of so on the one hand we want to be helping them have skills and we want to be really working as a village families schools the community together to to really face this head on, to promote the values of inclusion, kindness, compassion, to not tolerate bullying, but to know that we're not, that it's not something that is going to go away. So, yes. I was just going to say that I was thinking about what she was sharing and I remember as a child my parents emphasized values. Um, I yeah. was fortunate enough to be involved with charm school back in the, I don't know, 30s, 70s. <laughs> um, but Girl Scouts. And I remember yes. that consciousness yes. raising of not only thinking about yourself, but your community. And so my challenge now as I'm thinking about it is not a lot of communities now offer those kinds of opportunities for or good. they run minimal for many reasons. Right. Um, but I also think that we're the guiding post for these children as they're developing. And one concern I do have is that technology, and maybe other reasons as well, yeah. desensitize children. I wonder mm -hmm. sometimes about empathy because I don't mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about emphasizing positive. I think it's a positive quality that we don't see a lot of. Right, right. And to really underscore empathy where we see it. I mean, sometimes I really wish, like in my one of my ideal world fantasies that I go off on every once in a while, um, is thinking about the nightly news with the empathy report <laughs> and the respect report and the compassion report and like to get a little clip on those things going on in our world that would be a really nice thing for the 11 o'clock news <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah so so these skills are, are a really wonderful um, way of thinking about what we want to work with kids on, knowing that it is a lifelong process. I think that's, that's the key thing, knowing that we're really talking about lifelong learning. One of the things that often happened when we would go and do our workshops in the schools is we'd get one shot at it. You know, we'd go in, we'd do this fun workshop with the girls and talk to them about the roles that girls play in socially aggressive situations and tools that they could use and um, and then we'd go away and maybe the staff would be um, trained to help the girls continue to use those skills because they had a good character development program or a good conflict resolution program at the school but a lot of schools didn't have that and so, yeah, it was a great afternoon, but there wasn't the systemic support to really help girls with these skills and the boys with these skills that are lifelong learning skills. Um, 
One of the ways that I do talk to parents sometimes about it, and I did put this in your handout, I didn't put it in the PowerPoint up here, is sometimes I call it the five C's. Um, first of all, leading by example, which isn't a C, but it's just number one, lead by example. Number two, character development. Number three, communication skills. Number four, conflict resolution skills. Number five, calm those strong emotions, the capacity to calm those strong emotions. And then cognitive skills, cognitive skills for problem solving, etc. helping that frontal lobe do its best. Um, so the five C's and leading by example is one way that I sometimes talk to parents about it. It's a little more accessible sometimes than the more research-oriented language. So let's talk a little bit about self-awareness and self-management. Awareness of feelings and being able to name them. We think about this as a pretty fundamental Skill that we want children to learn from a really early age. Turns out that it's actually settling to the neurophysiology of the brain to name a feeling that you're feeling. So really a nice self-management skill can simply be to name that feeling I feel sad, I feel angry, I feel disappointed. Naming those feelings can actually help to settle and is an important part of the self-awareness, self-management process. 